Welcome back to my channel, everybody. Just wanted to show you I've installed an inline six amp fuse for the beast. There's the amp readings on it right now. And I took a little bit of the silver out yesterday. Got it right here. And what we'll do, if you look down in here, you can see that the uh, electrolyte is starting to uh, seep up into the impure silver in here. And that's why I've stuck those bars, those loose bars underneath the anode bar to keep the anode bar up out of the electrolyte. Here's the silver that I took out of the anode basket for the beast. I've got another anode filter made up here using a thin Dacron filter. So I'm gonna add this silver in here. And now what we'll do is go ahead and fill this thing up with the impure silver. Turn the power off on the beast. And now what we'll do is come down here and remove these loose bars of silver that I use as a buffer between the uh, electrolyte soaked impure silver shot. It's down in the bottom of this anode basket. You can see it down there, that liquid. And uh, what it'll do is if it's allowed to come in contact with our anode bar here, it will dissolve our anode bar. So I put these bars in there to act as a buffer. Let's see if we can get this uh, anode basket out of here now. Should be able to just pick it right straight up. Put it in this jar. And then we'll get this out of the way. Let's take a look down inside the beast and see what we got going on down in here. As you can see, there's a uh, fairly big chunk of silver growing right down here. See that? It's right below the anode basket. And I gotta keep this knocked down. Otherwise, the more it grows, the closer it gets to the anode basket, the shorter the uh, distance is between the anode and the cathode. And what will happen is the silver will start growing real fast right there and make contact with our anode basket. That's something we want to try to avoid. But man, that stuff looks good down in there. Look at that, man. Here's the newly prepared anode basket see down here I've got some holes in the bottom of these uh, cookware containers. I'm going to drop this right down in here and reinstall the anode electro bar. Before we energize the power supply, we give this a little dose of electrolyte. And then we'll stir this up a little bit. Here you can see the bottom of the anode filter basket is submerged or in contact with that electrolyte to complete the electrical circuit through the silver cell. Got the new anode filter with the thin Dacron filter bag installed. Now for the moment, we've been waiting for, let's see what kind of current flow we get through there. No difference, 2.7.
it will probably rise up over three amps as the uh, electrolyte seeps through the bag over time and slowly comes in contact with the impure silver in here. Here's silver cell number one. Let's see what we got down in here. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good, man. It's looking real good down in there. Let's give this a little dose of electrolyte as well. Stir it up. And as you can see up here, well, let's go ahead and add a little bit of silver, I guess. Maybe one spoon in here. And if you look up here, current flow is at about one amp for silver cell number one. The basket is still full of impure silver shot. Let's take a look down in here and see exactly what we've got. Oh yeah, look at that, man. This cell looks like it's got more in it for some reason. I don't know if it does. But it appears to have a little bit more than the other one. Silver cell number one. Let's go ahead and give it a shot of electrolyte. Silver cell number two, just over one amp. We've got the new anode filter basket down inside the beast. Amps are still 2.9. These two are cruising right along, slowly but surely. So I think this will conclude silver cell maintenance for day four. This is the completion of day four, 96 hours of operation for the three silver cells. Thank you for watching.